Hey guys, welcome back to more r slash entitled people stories. In this video, an insane Karen neighbor turned my farm into an illegal junkyard without my permission. Let's dive right into the video. And the first one is titled The Hospital Troublemaker. It was just another day at Oakwood Medical Center where I worked as a research coordinator. Most of my colleagues across various departments were pretty chill about assisting me with tasks related to my job. However, there was one person who seemed to have it out for me from the very start. A nurse named Karen at the oncology clinic. Karen was the epitome of laziness. Getting her to do any work was like trying to pry a video game controller from a petulant child's hands. She would grumble and drag her feet, acting as if the most basic nursing duties were a personal affront. One morning, I needed her to draw some blood samples for a protocol I was running. Despite giving the clinic ample notice, Karen acted utterly put out when I made the request. She reluctantly left her computer, which was not even open to anything work-related, and drew the tubes with a scowl. Thanks so much for your help, I said, laying on the gratitude perhaps a bit too thick. Later, another nurse told me that Karen had been bad-mouthing me to anyone who would listen, claiming my outfit, a basic white coat, blouse, pants and boots was too provocative. What an absurd complaint. Unfortunately, Karen's pettiness didn't stop there. Over the next few weeks, I often found myself having to interrupt her personal browsing sessions to request blood draws when other nurses were unavailable. She never looked pleased to see me, not long after my supervisor Jane called me into her office with a concerned look. Sarah, I've received a report about your dress habits around patients. I have not noticed anything inappropriate myself, but I have to address it. I assured her that I wore professional attire, but Jane revealed a formal complaint had been filed against me for my provocative outfits. Even worse, a supposed patient had corroborated the accusation. I was placed on probation with Jane and a nurse manager required to supervise me during clinic visits. Two days later, I had another time protocol that required a blood draw with Jane and the nurse manager in tow, we entered the nursing station to find Karen idly shopping online and scrolling through Facebook despite her nearby co-worker working diligently. Karen, I need you to draw some blood work, I said trying to suppress a grin. Grumbling, Karen spun around inadvertently exposing an open browser tab for a very NSFW website. Her face flushed as she scrambled to close the indecent window. In the hallway afterwards, the managers discussed Karen's lack of professionalism with the nurse manager vowing to review her computer activity. Karen's online presence told quite a story. She spent most of her shifts cyber loafing instead of working. Having previously received warnings about this behavior, she was promptly written up. But there was more fallout to come. The next day, Jane apologized profusely to me. Karen had fabricated the so-called patient complaint about my attire from her work account. All disciplinary actions against me were revoked. Fearing termination, Karen resigned. Strangely enough, the hospital allowed her to work out the final two weeks rather than firing her outright. On Karen's last day, I stopped by the nursing station while she was alone. Catching her browsing job listings, I unbuttoned my coat and quipped, good luck finding a new workplace where the employees are less provocatively dressed. Karen glared at me, but before she could retort, I lifted my dress up to flash her, adding, see you never, Karen, as I strolled out victorious. And yeah, ripe stars, I gotta say, that was quite a unique story. Very surprising ending indeed. Anyway, the next one is the title story, which is titled, Karen Neighbor turned my inherited farmland into an illegal junkyard while I was not inside the country. My family has owned a farm for generations. In this current housing market, it's certainly a lucky spot to own. The farmhouse itself is a six-bedroom, four-bathroom vintage building which has stood well over the years. It's surrounded by acres upon acres of land for the animals to graze and crops to grow. My siblings moved out a couple years back, deciding that as the most passionate for the farm, I should inherit it. My parents also decided to move out and they decided it was for the best that they settled down somewhere quieter, humbler, while they got older. They are only about an hour away, so pop up to visit when they can. Although the farm brings in money, I still have a regular job and at this particular time, I had to travel for six months for work. 
all the animals were moved to a nearby farm for looking after and the crops were not replanted. My neighbor, well, the closest house, which is about a half a mile away, had never met me before this altercation. But I later assumed that she had been eyeing up my farm for a long while before I left. So anyways, off I go for work. My parents and siblings knew I was away, so they did not stop by the farm in this time. They also knew that everything was being taken care of. I returned home after the long flight, drove up to my farm and saw that a couple of the acres were absolutely trashed. You could barely see the grass, there was that much junk on it. Old cars, metal scraps, regular trash, you name it. I thought I was seeing things, it was so bizarre. I just stood there for a few minutes trying to decide if I should call the cops or a therapist. Then I saw a woman standing near the rubble on my acre, throwing more metal onto a pile. Hey, what on earth are you doing? I yelled as I ran over. Sorry, do I know you? She asked. I own this land. What is happening? This part of the land is mine, she replied with a shrug, gesturing to the area she had fenced off for all of this junk. What? That's not true. I own this land. Who are you? I couldn't believe what was happening. I just live down there. I've driven past this place many a time. It simply is not fair that you get all this land. So I've taken over some. So you don't mind, do you, dear? What? Of course I bloody mind. This is my farm. You have just trespassed and put all this stuff here. What on earth makes you think you have the right to do this and to think that I would not mind? Excuse me, don't get confrontational with me. You have been gone for six months, so I started this the moment you left. If you had a problem, you could have said something sooner. Do you even hear yourself? You just admitted to knowing that I was away for six months. How could I have noticed sooner? I don't like where you are going with this. Where I'm going with this? Well, you've guessed correctly. I want you and all this junk off my property immediately. Ha, not a chance. I know I have much more money than you. I'm very influential in this area. And if you try to get rid of me in this junkyard, I will crush you. Are you threatening me, Karen? The woman who has committed a crime by trying to steal my property and creating an unpermitted and unlicensed junkyard? In what world will this go well for you? Get out of here! The woman suddenly dropped her tone, staring at me like an animal. I watched as she picked up some of the discarded metal, a crowbar of sorts, and aimed it at me. I went and stormed into the house, deciding I couldn't and probably shouldn't handle this on my own. I rung up the local police and filed a report explaining everything the best I could. I also called up the local council to explain the situation to them. The police came around the next day and I watched through the window as they talked to her. And then they left. I stormed out after them and said, hey sorry, what happened here? Ah, uh, well, she wants warrants and documents before answering questions. She's got good connections. This is not gonna be easy. I think you should hire a good lawyer. Seeing the woman standing in the background smirking at me, I walked back inside and began researching for the best lawyers in the area. I was not going down without a fight. I still couldn't believe what was going on though. I met up with a lawyer that same day, bringing with me all of the documents I had about the property. Unfortunately, I lost the original deed. But when I walked into that office, I realized I had hired the right person. I did some digging and I found a copy scan of the deed, confirming your family as the owners to the land. I've also found each document of the passing of the deed from family to family right up to the last one which notes you as the beneficiary to the entire property. So how easy will this be to win if I have to take her to court? Not an if unfortunately, you will have to do this. And I think with this evidence no amount of connections will save her. She's looking at some serious charges and I assume you'll be pressing to sue. Yes, that grass will be ruined, it will cost me so much to restore. Alright then, let's begin working on the paperwork. We spent that whole afternoon collecting evidence and creating a case and the next day the woman was served. How did I know? Well, she came knocking. Open the door, I heard her scream. I smirked and walked over. Hello, what can I do for you, hun? Don't you dare call me that. What's the meaning of this? She waved the paper in front of her hand and I pulled a fake confused face taking the paper from her hand and pretending to read it. Oh, hmm, yes, I'm suing you. Sorry for the confusion. I assume you cannot read well. How dare you? You cannot sue me. Do you have any idea the type of people I have connections with? Well, kind of. All I know it, it's not enough to get yourself out of this. Now, we really shouldn't be speaking before we are in court though. I don't give a damn. I'm gonna destroy you. Mark my words. I shrugged and then shut the door. I heard her banging on the other side for about 10 minutes before she gave up and stormed back over to her junkyard. Sometime later in court she had a whole team of lawyers with her. They all looked cocky as if we didn't have sufficient evidence. Your honor, my client's neighbor here was away for 6 months. During this time my client fenced off some of the land with the correct equipment and standards. 
Okay, we know this. What's your point? Well, I... He had been away for six months, not tending to the land. So she rightfully took ownership of some of it. And what's your evidence? Ma'am, respectfully, I think you know who she is. It might be wise if you, um, you know... I don't take bribery or threats. Sit down, you're lucky if I don't take your license away. Now what's your evidence? The judge suddenly turned towards my lawyer, who handed over the documents. The judge reviewed them, shaking her head. Gosh, this is ridiculous. The evidence of land ownership dating back to 1890s should be enough. But I've supplied the generations of beneficiaries as courtesy, my lawyer explained. I watched as my neighbor's face drained, as well as her lawyers. I assume given it's such an old property, they thought the deeds did not exist. The woman tried to speak up, but the judge shushed her. For the act of stealing property and damaging property, you will be fined $100,000 to your neighbor. For the unpermitted junkyard, creating countless environmental issues, you will be fined a further $50,000 to the Council and Environment Committee and have to partake in 200 hours of community service. I was shocked at the extent of the fines, but was more than pleased. You cannot do this! I will destroy you! The woman screamed at the judge, who simply rolled her eyes. Of course, all land ownership still belonged to me. I used about a quarter of the money I want to repair the land and remove the junk. The rest was more of a bonus. My neighbor was also charged to pay my legal fees, which took that off my plate. Turns out she was not as rich as she exclaimed, as a few weeks later she filed for bankruptcy and had to sell her house. I don't know where she moved, but hopefully very far away. And by the way, Ripe Stars, this story did not happen in America, instead it was a story from Southeast Asia. And if some parts were a little weird in terms of grammar or writing, I'm sorry, I machine translated that story. It was in a different language before. I hope you don't mind. Anyway, the next one is titled, My Husband Killed Them. I have many many house plans and even some that were quite expensive and were gifts from my sister. Within the last six months at least a third of my plans have died. I've had house plans my whole life due to my late mom's own love of house plans and I know a lot about plans. The death of the plants did not seem related to a lack of light or inconsistent watering or lack of nutrients or even root rot. They just died very suddenly. I tried to not let it upset me too much because plants die and it was not any of the expensive ones until now. My sister gave me a five-leaf monstera elbow rooted plant for my birthday two months ago. It was beautiful. This morning I was crying pretty hard about it as I unpotted it and took a look at the roots and I was looking hard at this plant and roots to see if its death was pest related and that's when I noticed a smell. I sniffed my potting mix and I smelled bleach. The only other adult person in my home with unlimited and unobserved access to my plants is my husband. I was not able to talk to him for several hours, but when I could speak to him, I very calmly but very directly asked if he had done something to my plants. He denied it at first and I said I smelled bleach in the potting mix of the elbow my sister had gotten me and that the only other person that could have put it there was him and then he caved. He said he was putting small amounts of bleach into the fertilizer water jugs I prepare. I started crying. I asked him, why? Why would you do this? You know I love these plants and why would you destroy them? He did not really answer, nor did he really apologize. The trust I had in him is absolutely gone. I think maybe counseling can help us, but he's the one that did this, but I'm the one that would have to set up the counseling. The angry part of me just wants to be done with the relationship. I know that might seem overboard as we are married and share a child, but I feel now that I'm not safe around my husband anymore. And yeah, Ripe Stars, let me know what you think about this one in the comments. I'm very curious about what you have to say. Either way, OP updated the story and said, The townhome we live in is mine and my sister's, our inheritance from my mother, my husband has an office slash den slash gaming room, that is his personal space and there are no plants there. There are also no plants in the kitchen, I'm not a plant hoarder. Like he has a room for himself and I also have a sunroom and that is where the concentration of plants live. He has no reason to go in there, it's not access to our backyard or anything and I saw some people saying that maybe he's sick of bugs but I don't have a fungus gnat problem. Also I did see one person ask why I didn't smell the bleach when I was watering and I can only say my nose was not all up in there maybe. I also usually use a natural systemic in my fertilizer water called SNS209 that smells heavily of rosemary but I ran out last month and I haven't replaced it yet. After our convo yesterday, I needed space, I spent the night in my daughter's room on a trundle bed, I'm gonna text my husband today. He usually communicates easier and opens up more via text rather than face to face, I'm gonna ask for a reason and I'll see what he says. 
Edit number two. Sorry, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to update on a separate post, but anyway, my husband won't be welcome in my home anymore and I need to find a lawyer ASAP on Monday. I did text him and he admitted again to putting bleach in my fertilizer water. He says it was not every jerk I ever made, so that explains why it was not all my plants dying but randomly over the past six months. His exact words were that I deserve to be knocked down a peg. After the text communication I went home from work early and I entered his office. I usually respect his space absolutely, I don't even go in there to grab dirty dishes, I don't know what I was looking for but the hundreds of comments saying he was working up to something worse or already was doing something else really worried me. I went in there and I found a drawer full of my daughter's dolls and dollhouse furniture and little toys. I bought her that dollhouse for her fourth birthday last year and she has loved it. She takes such good care of her toys but something always ends up missing and it's always my husband who notices. He lectures her about keeping track of her things and how he won't let her play with her dollhouse if she keeps losing things. He keeps going until she starts to sob and when I hear this going on I always step in and ask him to go take a break. I assumed he was just losing his cool. I've told him this is not how to deal with this with a kid and he says he just wants her to grow up responsible. I now see it was some weird scheme or something or a setup. He would steal the stuff and stash it away and point out it was gone to berate our daughter until she cried. My sister and her husband and her husband's dad came over this afternoon and they've changed the locks. I've texted him to tell him that he's not coming back and that he can come on Saturday morning to grab his essential things but that my brother-in-law and another man would be there to watch. And yeah guys, unfortunately there are no further updates to the story but honestly it seems like OP really needs to divorce this guy because it seems like she will be dodging a huge bullet. This guy's behavior is seriously suspicious and malicious. Let me know what you think in the comments. And the next one is titled Office Revenge. I got a job, basically office sitting on weekends, I showed up at 8am and every hour I checked over things, handled the occasional phone call and then left when the 4pm person arrived. Most of the time I read, watch TV or play games on my laptop. I probably work no more than 10 minutes of every hour unless something went wrong. It went on like this for years, the pay was decent, holidays were double pay and I even had opportunities to cover weekday shifts when others were sick. One day while I was covering the midday shift, my boss asked me to come into his office. He told me that the evening weekday position was gonna become available that night. He offered me the position which I accepted, I was told to punch out and return at 5pm that night. The reason it went down like this should be obvious, things went okay for a while. I showed up at 4pm, did the normal things and then left at 12am when my relief arrived. It was a little more work, more call volumes etc and then after 9 months things started to go south. The daytime person developed a huge attitude problem and went from a nice person to a total Karen. She would complain about everything I did. For example, one time a system jammed up at a remote site and she called them. Five hours later I saw the jam was still there, so I called that site again to see if they were still working on it or if something else was wrong because the woman on our end would be the one to help them was leaving soon. They did have a problem and so I hooked them up. My reward for making sure the problem got solved and not having to bother an upper level employee at home on a Friday just after having left work. I got yelled at because Karen complained that I had apparently ignored her log entry about the issue. My defense was ignored. The boss had me highlight important things on the log to verify that I had read them, things plotted on for a while with this new normal. I tiptoed around Karen when needed, thankful for the fact that I only had to deal with her for no more than 5 minutes. I did the stupid highlighting thing and my log entries started getting more and more detailed. I was even referencing Karen's calls when I had to follow up on an issue that crossed shifts. The firing the following summer just after I crossed a year mark I went on vacation to visit some friends out of state. When I got back after about a week my boss came down after everyone had left and had me describe how I did a certain task which involved certain updates. I explained to him how I did it and so forth and he then told me that I had not been doing it at all and that he was firing me. I had transposed the data code of the English file for the French file which was the previous one. The newest one had already been applied anyway so nothing was wrong. 
It was just a reason to get rid of me, so I left the office. My state is an at-will employment state, which means that I can quit at any time for any reason and my employer can terminate me at any time for any reason as well. The only exceptions were state and federal laws such as race, religion, etc. I thought I was screwed. So I just started applying everywhere I could. During my job search I happened to accidentally stumble upon a link about employment law. Out of curiosity, I read it and discovered that my employer had shot themselves in the foot. In the employee handbook, there was a job security clause. What this stated was that they would never lay us off and such if our jobs were eliminated. We would simply be retrained and sent to fill an opening elsewhere in the company. It sounded good, but it resulted in them cooking up reasons to fire people to get around it. However, their fancy high-priced lawyers had missed something. In my state's laws, the ones passed by the legislature, I was screwed because of at will. What they neglected was case law, the ones determined by courts. This side cited a case from the state supreme court that had ruled that a job security clause waived at will on the employer side, turning it into a just cause relationship. This means that they have to have a real reason to fire me. The revenge with that in hand, I sought out a lawyer. After my consultation with her, I set about collecting my evidence. My former boss did not realize that I knew more about his program than he did, seeing as I ran the same software on my computer and laptop and I experimented. The date of the file which they tried to use against me is baked into the version 2. I was able to demonstrate to my lawyer that if I applied the same update over and over, which my former employer stated would change the date every day, would in reality display the the date of the file. I showed this by backdating my own copy by a year using the update archive available from the vendor. Next, I showed her how the task used to be automated. A script would snag the file and process it every day on its own. A change on the vendor's side broke the script then. It was an easy fix, but no one bothered to do it because the guy who had wrote it retired. The fix involved deleting three characters on one line in the script. The task was also marked as only being a weekday task. In my firing I was told how important this update was and so forth. If it was so important, why was it not done on weekends or holidays? The vendor pushed out updates on those days too, as I showed my lawyer the one from Christmas morning. And why had the automation not been fixed? With all that in hand, she contacted them. After presenting them with the law, they broke and all the evidence I had collected, they were forced to settle with me. So in the end, their fancy high-priced lawyers did not do their homework, but I did. Thank you to the wonderful librarians I have known in my life who taught me my information literacy skills. They paid dividends in this case. Edit, obviously the terms of the settlement are confidential and as far as I know still in effect. It was a good portion of my salary though. I also got unemployment during this time as well. I never found out how the reaction went down as the main corporate office that would have dealt with it was in another state and I never had any contact with those people. I imagine a new handbook was issued before they cut my check though, so I feel bad for those who remained. Karen's fate was sealed about a year later. I saw a Facebook post by a former co-worker mentioning that his job with them had ended so I asked for details. The company experienced a huge loss in revenue. As a result, Karen lost her job as the site I had worked in was closed. Of about the 50 of us that worked in that office, only 10 or so were moved to another location. Thankfully, most of the ones I liked were old enough to retire. It did not take a genius to realize that my termination was simply a layoff disguised as a firing. And yeah, ripe stars, I hope that stupid boss of that company learned a lesson for unfairly terminating slash firing OP. And by the way guys, I'm curious, have you ever been unfairly terminated at your job? And if so, did you fight it in some way or another? Let us know about your story, I'm very curious. And yeah guys, if you cannot get enough of my content, please don't forget to check out my podcast by searching for Ripe Stories on all major podcast platforms such as Spotify, Apple or Google Podcasts. Furthermore, you can find bonus content by going to patreon.com slash ripe YouTube or by clicking the join button here on YouTube. For a small monthly fee, you will get access to dozens and dozens of exclusive videos you won't find anywhere else. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again tomorrow.